What's up everybody, Pastor Matt here. Thank you so much for checking into my YouTube channel. Feel free to like and subscribe, that would be great. Uh, today we're gonna do a brief review of the classic book, 1984, an amazing book. I'm ashamed that I have not read it before today, but I finished it today. It's a great book. And it's, for me, it's an instant classic. It's immediately going to go on my list of the top 100 books that I've ever read. Um, if you don't know, my name is Matt. I'm the pastor of Gospel Fellowship PCA, a reformed Bible-believing church just north of Pittsburgh. Love to have you come visit us at some point. Also a writer, contributor for Modern Reformation, their online forum, The Mod. So please check that out as well. Let's go ahead and get into the book. I'll give you a couple of warnings here, and then I'll give you a little bit of the plot, and then a little bit of the insight from the book. So, first of all, a couple of warnings. Again, I'll put a link to this book in the description of this video if you'd like to grab it. A couple of warnings, though. First of all, there is some gratuitous sexuality in this book. Uh, it's not necessarily pornographic, but it is vividly sexual. So please guard your heart, guard your eyes. Be careful if this is the kind of book that you are going to read or not. Trust you to make that decision for yourself. But there is some sexuality in there. Also, the other warning I want to give you is that there are going to be some spoilers in this review. Uh, not too many spoilers. I'm not going to give the whole plot away, but I'm going to say just enough to cue you in as to what the book is about. Um, so you can decide whether or not you read it. So the protagonist in the story is one named Winston Smith. The book, as the title suggests, takes place in the year 1984, which from the perspective of George Orwell, who wrote it in 1949, was the future for us, of course. That's the past. Uh, but for him, that was foreshadowing what totalitarian regimes may look like in the future. Now, remember, in the 40s, the world had just finished up the Second Great War, and there had been some terrible totalitarian governments in that era that Orwell is undoubtedly uh, responding to. If you read Animal Farm, that's another similar book and another great book that he wrote, but 1984 is probably his masterpiece. Uh, so Winston is part of the party. There are three great regimes in the world at this time. There's Oceania, there's East Asia, and there's Eurasia. Winston lives in Oceania, and there's only one party. It is the state. It is the government. The party is ruled by what they call Big Brother, which is another way of saying the love for the nation, the state, even the party itself. Uh, the party has four offices of the government. Essentially, there's the Ministry of Truth, the Ministry of Peace, the Ministry of Love, and the Ministry of Plenty. And all of those are ironic because the Ministry of Truth is really the Ministry of Propaganda. The Ministry of Peace is really the Ministry of War. Love is really the police state enforcement of its law, and Plenty has to actually do with starvation and scarcity. So Winston works for the Ministry of Truth. His job is to redact history so that it always comports with the official narrative and dogma of the state, which is a pretty tough job because the state is always changing its view, even with who it's at war with. One day, Winston discovers the fact that the party is altering the truth to its own good. He'd long thought this. He'd long uh, knew this deep in his heart, but one day it becomes... Um, irrefutably true that that's exactly what's happening. And so Winston begins to flirt with the idea of an underground rebellious movement called the Brotherhood. In so doing, he falls in love with a co-worker named Julia with whom he has an adulterous and romantic affair. And therein is the gratuitous, gratuitous sexuality in the book. All the while, Winston and Julia are dodging the all-seeing eye of Big Brother, the state, who monitors absolutely everything, every movement, every facial expression, absolutely everything that one does. Okay, so towards the end of the book, and I'm not going to give it all away, Winston and Julia are subjected to some of the most cruel and violent interrogation that has ever been described in literature before. And therein is the other warning for you that this book is, ab I mean, it's moving and provoking, okay, in all of the ways that can disturb you and uh, shake you to the core. Now, there are a couple things in this book that I think are very important given the direction that our currently free nation is heading. And herein are some of the big concepts of the book 1984. First of all, the concept of the mottos. The mottos of the state are war is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. Okay, 
War is peace. They try to accomplish peace by perpetual war. A freedom is slavery. They don't want anybody to be truly free, even in the way they think. And then, of course, ignorance is strength. They tell the people that they're strong by being ignorant, controlling their minds. And in so doing, the government foists upon them what they call double think. That is the inherent contradiction of trying to believe two things that are rationally and logically incompatible. That's the whole point. If the government can get you to suppress your thought, your logic, your beliefs, and simply believe the lie of the party, they have got you. In order to do that, they utilize some tools such as the historical memory hole. Any fact, incident, character, historical person that doesn't support the narrative of the state, they throw it down the memory hole, never to be heard of again, unless of course it's convenient for the state to draw that back up to reality once again. The greatest crime against the state, and this is really important, is what they call a thought crime. Thought crime is punishable by torture. It is punishable by death. If you commit a thought crime, you have thought in a way that is not sanctioned by the state and its propaganda. And I'll just give you a hint here. That's the crime that Winston and Julia are going to be charged with in this amazing book. I put it in my list of top 100 before I even finished it. This book speaks to us in a number of ways. If we want to safeguard our freedoms, if we want to safeguard freedom of the press, if we want to safeguard a freedom of religion, if we want to safeguard freedom of thought, then we had better familiarize ourselves with some of the big ideas that are presented here in George Orwell's 1984. An incredible book, moving, thrilling work of fiction, although sometimes it seems a little bit too much like reality. I'm going to put a link to this book in the description of this video so you can hop right over to Amazon and get it. Believe me, if you read it, it's going to make you think. It's going to make you shudder. Whew, powerful book. Go ahead and grab it in the link. Thanks for checking in. Feel free, to, feel free to subscribe if you'd like. If you don't want to, no big deal. Thanks for checking in. Love you lots, and we'll talk to you later.